Hey guys, today's video is the combination of parts 1 and 2 of what if Luke was trained from birth. I have also added a new part 3, to which a timestamp should be on the screen now so you can skip to that if you would like to. Part 3 will conclude this story once and for all. I hope you all enjoy, and may the force be with you. Luke Skywalker was born into a galaxy of war and oppression. His father, Anakin Skywalker, had turned to the dark side and helped bring about the fall of the Jedi Order. It was in this world that Luke was born, and it was destined he be trained to become a Jedi. Now obviously we know that Obi-Wan waited until Luke was 19 years old to begin his training, but this caused many issues, such as Luke never reaching his full potential. That power that Luke was destined to reach had the potential to surpass some of the greatest Jedi in history. So what if things didn't play out this way? What if Luke Skywalker was trained from birth by Obi-Wan on the planet Tatooine? Obi-Wan Kenobi, who had been Anakin Skywalker's mentor before he turned to the dark side, took it upon himself to watch over Luke and keep him safe from the Empire, rather than give him to his uncle. However, Obi-Wan knew that he could not keep Luke hidden forever. Eventually, the young boy would need to be trained in the ways of the Jedi, if he was to ever have a chance of defeating the Empire and restoring peace to the galaxy. Obi-Wan was an experienced Jedi Master, having trained under Qui-Gon Jinn and later taking Anakin as an apprentice. He knew what it took to train a Jedi, but he also knew that training Luke from birth would be a challenge. Obi-Wan was too inexperienced and young to train Anakin, but now he is far older, more experienced and a wiser Jedi Master. Because of this, he is more equipped to train Luke and not repeat the mistakes of the past. Unlike Anakin, who had already grown to be a young adult when he began his training, Luke would have to be trained as a child. This would require a different approach, one that would be more focused on nurturing his connection to the Force and developing his physical and mental abilities. Obi-Wan spent countless hours meditating and studying the ways of the Force in order to better understand how to teach a young child. He also spent time honing his own combat skills, knowing that he would need to be able to keep up with a growing and increasingly powerful Luke. When Luke was just a few years old, Obi-Wan began his formal training. At first, it was simple exercises designed to develop Luke's connection to the Force. Obi-Wan taught him how to focus his mind, how to feel the energy of the universe flowing through him, and how to use that energy to move objects with his mind. Luke took to these exercises quickly, showing a natural affinity for the Force. As Luke grew older, Obi-Wan began to teach him more advanced skills. He taught him how to wield a lightsaber, showing him the proper forms and techniques for both offensive and defense. Luke's natural athleticism made him a quick learner, and he soon became proficient with the weapon. It was clear from the beginning that Luke had talent. Much like his father, the force came easy to him. Simple techniques and force abilities that would take most younglings years to master, Luke learnt in weeks. Obi-Wan also taught Luke the history and philosophy of the Jedi Order. He told him about ancient Jedi Knights who protected the galaxy for thousands of years, and about the mistakes that had led to their downfall. He taught Luke the importance of compassion, selflessness, and the pursuit of knowledge. Despite Obi-Wan's best efforts, however, Luke's training was not without its challenges, as no Jedi's is. As he grew older, Luke became increasingly aware of the outside world, and the struggles of the rebellion against the Empire. It was a common occurrence for Obi-Wan to take Luke to nearby settlements and worlds to show him what the Empire was capable of causing. This constant view of death and destruction caused Luke's desire to help the oppressed citizens in the galaxy. Obi-Wan understood Luke's urge to help, but he also knew that the time was not right yet. Luke's training was not complete, and he was not yet ready to face the full might of the Empire. Obi-Wan urged Luke to be patient and focus on his training, knowing that his time would come soon enough. 
Despite the challenges, Luke's training continued. As he entered his teenage years, he began to develop a deeper understanding of the Force. He learned how to use it to sense the emotions and intentions of others, and how to use it to heal injuries and illnesses. Obi-Wan was amazed at Luke's progress, and he knew that it was time for Luke to build his own lightsaber. Building a lightsaber was a dangerous task. It required a Jedi to travel to the planet Ilum, where they would search for a kyber crystal. The crystal was the heart of a lightsaber, and it was what gave the weapon its power. The caves on Ilum were treacherous, and many Jedi had lost their lives there. Luke was nervous about the task, but he had to do it. He and Obi-Wan traveled to Ilum, and Luke began his search for the kyber crystal. Luke must do this alone, without his master's assistance. It was tradition that a Jedi Knight searches the caves on Ilum until they locate a kyber crystal that bonds with them. Luke marches the caves in search of his weapon. For hours he tries to connect with the cave, but he cannot. He believes he must be doing something wrong, until he turns the corner and sees a bright light emitting at the end of a cave. He runs towards it, so glad to have finally found his prize. But as he runs, his mind is jolted back to the desert planet where he grew up. He was extremely confused and didn't understand what was happening. He looked behind him where he saw a man walking into a nearby shop wearing Jedi robes. He didn't know who this man was, but he decided to follow him. Within the shop, the man speaks to a young boy. This boy caught Luke's attention and he wondered who it was. Suddenly, the scenery changed and Luke found himself sitting in the chair within a circular tower, surrounded by other people wearing Jedi robes. In the middle of the room stood the same boy and older man. He heard their names, Qui-Gon Jinn and Anakin Skywalker. Skywalker, he thought to himself, was this his father? Obi-Wan had told him that his father was a Jedi, but he also said that he was killed during Order 66. Luke then sees the young boy when he is older and he is standing next to Obi-Wan. Luke remained extremely confused. The scenery and environment around him kept changing as he experienced Anakin growing up. He saw battles throughout the Clone Wars, his love for Padme, who Luke could see was his mother. He saw everything. But when Luke learned the truth of Chancellor Palpatine, he saw Anakin go to his office to arrest him, but instead, he killed Master Window and pledged himself to the dark side. Luke began to shake vigorously. This wasn't true, these visions were lying to him. His father could never do these things that he was witnessing. Luke followed his father as he ravaged the Jedi Temple and killed any Jedi in sight. Anakin went to Mustafar where he choked his wife to the ground unconscious and fought Obi-Wan. And then he saw Obi-Wan slice him to the ground defeated. It was done. Luke stares in horror as the mask of Darth Vader is placed on his father's head. Luke returns to Ilum and is gasping for air. Obi-Wan had lied to him, he thought. As he looked at his hands, he saw his kyber crystal resting within his palms. He'd succeeded in getting his kyber crystal, but why had the force shown him his father? He turned to leave the cave when his mind was once again shot across the galaxy and placed on a dark world. Luke was an inanimate object. The force was guiding his movements. He saw Vader calling to him. Vader called Luke his son and told him to come to Moraband immediately. And with that, Luke ran out of the caves. Before we continue, please check out our Discord server where I am very active with the community. It is a great place to discuss the current shows and news. I'll leave the link in the description below and I look forward to seeing you all there. Okay, back to the video. Luke immediately told Obi-Wan what he saw and learned in the visions. Luke asked if Vader truly was his father. Obi-Wan sighed and explained that it was true. Kenobi told Luke that he didn't want him to know because his emotions might come distorted when he eventually faces Vader. He might treat him differently. Luke understood why Obi-Wan didn't tell him, but he was still hurt at the lack of honesty. Obi-Wan was concerned, but knew that the Force must be trying to tell him something. Obi-Wan explained to Luke that he must be very wary of these visions, but not shy away in fear. He should embrace what the Force is telling him and confront the visions. As they left the planet, Luke successfully built his lightsaber on the ship. Obi-Wan knew that now was the right time for him and Luke to join the rebellion. The year is now 1 BBY, and Luke is approximately 18 years old. Luke had completed his training and Obi-Wan had no more to teach him. 
Obi-Wan was amazed at how powerful Luke was and wondered if he even rivaled Anakin before he turned to the dark side. At this point, the Rebellion had slowly been making progress throughout the galaxy, disrupting the Empire's expansion and causing as much disturbance as possible. The Rebel fleet was now the largest it had ever been and had lots of backing from various corners of the galaxy. But the Empire was also extremely large and powerful and had a strong grip on the galaxy. They ruled with fear and terror to maintain order and loyalty throughout the numerous systems they controlled. Luke and Obi-Wan met up with the Rebellion, who warmly welcomed them. Luke continued to talk to his master about the visions that he saw. Obi-Wan finally said that they will go to Moraband in order to discover what the visions were trying to tell him, just so they can put Luke's mind at rest. Obi-Wan had doubts of the validity of Luke's dreams, but could tell they were getting into Luke's mind, so they decided they must be addressed. Before they left, they were greeted by Ahsoka Tano, an old friend that Kenobi hadn't seen in years. Ahsoka had spent her days working for the Rebellion restlessly. She was introduced to Luke Skywalker, who she graciously said hello to. Luke reminded her of his father, Anakin. After she was informed what they were doing, she said she would join them too. The three left and headed to Moraband. Luke, Obi-Wan and Ahsoka landed on Moraband, the planet of the Sith. The Sith had chosen this ancient planet, home to the ruins of the Sith Empire as their meeting place. As they walked towards the ruins, they could hear the chanting of Sith cult followers. They knew they had to be careful, as the followers were fierce and would fight anyone to protect their Sith Lords. As they approached the ruins, they saw Vader sitting in front of a statue of Darth Malgus, but next to him sat the Sith Lord Darth Sidious. They were surrounded by the chanting cult followers. The two Sith Lords turned to face them, and the cult followers fell silent. Palpatine's eyes glowed with the dark side of the Force, and Vader's respirator hissed as he drew his lightsaber. Obi-Wan stepped forward, and with a wave of his hand, the cult followers were thrown back, creating a clear space for the confrontation. The three Jedi ignited their lightsabers, and the battle began. Palpatine unleashed a barrage of force lightning at Obi-Wan, who countered with his own defensive maneuvers. Meanwhile, Luke and Ahsoka engaged in a ferocious duel with Vader. The battle raged on, with each combatant showing their incredible mastery of the Force. Palpatine was a formidable opponent, using his immense power to attack the Jedi with deadly Force lightning. Obi-Wan was barely holding his own, and it was clear that he was outmatched by the Sith Lord. Luke wasn't just holding his own against Vader, but using his Chosen One genes to outmatch him. Because Luke was trained from birth, his powers were far stronger than what we see in the original trilogy. Many years ago, when Ahsoka was a Padawan to Anakin Skywalker, Anakin had taught her how to face larger opponents. She knew what moves and steps to take in order to duel Vader and win. As he swung the blade at her, there was a sense of familiarity that made her think Anakin was still in there somewhere. The three continued to fight, as Luke used all of his force power to try and finish his father. Luke used the force to hurl Vader across the battlefield, cutting off both of his robotic arms with a swift stroke of his lightsaber. Vader fell to the ground defeated, and Luke turned his attention to Palpatine. As Luke rushed towards Palpatine, Obi-Wan was caught off guard by a sudden attack from behind. Palpatine had used the distraction of Luke's attack to sneak up behind Obi-Wan and strike him down. Obi-Wan fell to the ground, his lightsaber extinguished. Ahsoka saw what happened and let out a cry of rage. She charged at Palpatine, but he easily dodged her attacks and sent her flying with a powerful force push. Luke was now alone against the Sith Lord, and he knew that he had to finish the fight. He charged at Palpatine, their lightsabers clashing with incredible force. Luke was fighting with all of his might, using all of his skills and abilities to defeat the Sith Lord. Luke locked blades with Palpatine, before sliding his weapon across Palpatine's arm, causing his limb to hit the floor and his lightsaber to turn off. Luke stared at the old man and struck the killing blow, driving his lightsaber deep into Palpatine's chest. Sidious screamed in agony as he fell to the ground, lifeless. Luke turned to face Vader, who was lying on the ground, his robotic arms destroyed. Ahsoka had returned to her feet as she and Luke marched over to him. 
they could see the face of Anakin Skywalker beneath the mask. He was still alive and the wise choice would be to finish him off for good. But neither could do it. For Luke, this was his father. And for Ahsoka, it was the man who used to be her best friend and master. They decided to leave him there and not kill him. As Luke turned away, he says goodbye father. This shocked Vader to his very core and he began to hiss and groan for Luke to come back. But it was too late. Luke was gone. The Sith were defeated and the Empire would surely fall quickly now. In their mind, there was no one left to lead the Empire now that Palpatine was dead. But neither of them ever considered that Grand Admiral Thrawn would take Palpatine's place. Luke and Ahsoka leave the planet, desperate to escape and forget the horrors of Obi-Wan's death. Weeks passed, maybe more. Vader lay still on the tough ruins of Moraband. He couldn't believe what Luke said as he walked away. He was his father. Vader thought back to Padme and his past life, something which he hadn't done in countless years. It was a lifetime ago. To Vader, it had been forgotten. The thought of her only brought pain and suffering. As he lay on the ground thinking of his son, he heard a ship fly above him. Landing only meters away, walking off the ramp was a blue skinned alien wearing an imperial uniform. Vader winced as he knew who this was, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Thrawn greeted Vader as he motioned his head towards Palpatine's desiccating body. He was dead. He ordered his troops to recover Vader and bring him on board. They leave the planet and head straight for a medical center. Vader is taken into operation. His remaining metal limbs are removed and his helmet is torn from his face. He was a mere broken man, lying on his deathbed, begging for death. Though Thrawn would not grant him that satisfaction, the droids operating on him begin to slowly rebuild him, enhancing his suit and making it even stronger, a process that Palpatine was against allowing Vader to do after his fatal loss to Obi-Wan on Mustafar. But Thrawn had a different perspective. If Vader could become as powerful as his talents allowed, then the Grand Admiral could rule the galaxy even faster. That was Thrawn's plan, to succeed Palpatine as Emperor of the Galaxy. He believed that having Vader under his command was a crucial stepping stone to this achievement. Darth Vader rose from his medical station and was reborn. All that was left was reinforcing the dark side within Vader. To reintroduce the dark side within Vader, Thrawn forces him to watch clips from his old life. He knew that Vader was previously Anakin Skywalker. Thrawn was cunning and knew the minds of Sith Lords. They were driven by anger and passion. Through Thrawn forcing Vader to re-experience all that he had lost in his life again, both of those emotions would rise. And with that, his hatred and lust to attach himself to darkness will be complete. Lord Vader remains entrenched in the dark side with endless hate. Meanwhile, Luke and Ahsoka have reunited with the rebels and shared what happened with Vader and Palpatine. The Rebellion was in a fantastic position to win the war at this point. With Palpatine and Vader out of the picture, they could focus on securing control over the galaxy. Princess Leia, a high general within the Rebellion, explains that now is the time to launch an attack on the remnants of the Empire. They devise a plan to gather the Rebel fleet together on Ryloth. Thrawn wishes to test Vader's new suit and powers. He needed to know if he was still of use to him. The blue-skinned alien had heard rumors of the old Sith Lord Maul, causing issues in the Outer Rim. As a result, Thrawn sends Vader to hunt down and kill Darth Maul. This was no easy task, and Maul was an extremely powerful adversary. In order to eliminate him from existence, Vader would have to use all of his strength. He sent probes to all corners of the galaxy and searched every last location until he found him. It took time, but eventually he received the report that Maul was hiding in the Utapau system. Without a second to waste, Vader exited his Star Destroyer on a Lambda T4A shuttle and made his way to the planet's surface. Maul could sense the presence of the masked figure of evil. Maul knew if he could kill Vader, then he could take his place. The two Sith Lords stood face to face on the barren, rocky surface of Utapau. Darth Maul 
with his double-bladed lightsaber ignited, exuded a fierce energy that could be felt in the air. Darth Vader, on the other hand, stood tall and intimidating in his new suit, his crimson lightsaber glowing menacingly in his hand. As the two began to circle each other, Maul made the first move, charging towards Vader with incredible speed. The two exchanged a series of blows. The sound of their lightsabers clashing echoed throughout the surrounding canyons. Maul's acrobatic fighting style made him a formidable opponent, but Vader's raw strength and power were unmatched. As the fight progressed, Vader began to gain the upper hand, slowly pushing Maul back with each attack. With a fierce yell, Vader lunged towards Maul, delivering a powerful strike that knocked Maul's lightsaber out of his hand. He stumbled back, but quickly recovered the blade and launched himself at Vader attacking with all of his might. However, Vader was too quick and too strong for Maul to handle, and he easily overpowered him. With one final crushing blow, Vader brought his lightsaber down upon Maul's neck, cutting him down in a spectacular explosion of sparks and debris. As Maul's lifeless body lay on the floor, Vader stood over him, breathing heavily. He had emerged victorious, proving himself to be the true master of the dark side. Vader returned to Thrawn victorious, much to Thrawn's delight. He informs Vader that now is the time to end the rebellion for good. Thrawn's spies in the rebellion informed him of their movements on Ryloth, as he told his pilots to set course for the planet. As Thrawn's Star Destroyer emerged from hyperspace, the rebel fleet could be seen in the distance. He stood on the bridge of his ship, surveying the scene with a calm intensity. He commanded his officers to ready all of the weapons. The ship's weapon systems sprang to life, unleashing a barrage of laser fire at the rebel fleet. The rebels, caught off guard by Thrawn's sudden appearance, scrambled to respond, but their ships were no match for the might of the numerous Star Destroyers. As the battle raged on in space, Vader led a daring ground assault upon the rebels' base on Ryloth. He and his squad of elite stormtroopers descended upon the planet's surface in a transport shuttle. Touching down amidst a hail of blaster fire, Vader emerged from the shuttle, his red lightsaber igniting as he charged towards the enemy lines. The rebels fought back fiercely, but Vader's mastery of the force and his skill with the lightsaber made him nearly invincible. With each swing of his weapon, Vader cut down rebel soldiers left and right, sending them flying through the air. He moved with a fluid grace, the dark side of the force fueling his every move. The rebels put up a valiant fight, but they were no match for Vader's sheer power. As the battle reached its climax, Vader stood amidst a sea of fallen enemies, his lightsaber glowing menacingly in the flickering light of the battlefield. As the ground assault continued, Vader caught sight of a familiar figure in the distance. It was Luke Skywalker the son he had no knowledge of existing. Without hesitation, Vader charged towards Luke, his lightsaber blazing with an intense red light. Luke met him head on, his own green lightsaber flashing in the sunlight. The two clashed in a furious battle, Vader's strength and experience pitted against Luke's raw talent and determination. Ahsoka Tano, Vader's former apprentice, joined the fray, attacking Vader from behind. Together, Luke and Ahsoka fiercely fought against Vader, their lightsabers swirling in a dazzling display of combat. However, despite their combined efforts, Vader proved to be too powerful, slowly pushing them back towards a cliff edge. Luke and Ahsoka looked around them. They were losing. The stormtroopers had made extreme progress on the ground, and they were receiving word that Thrawn had overrun the rebel fleet in space. It was over. They couldn't win. All that was left was surviving in hopes of living to fight another day. In a final, desperate move, Ahsoka sacrificed herself to save Luke and the remaining rebels. She launched herself at Vader, distracting him long enough for Luke to get the rest of the rebels out and escape. As Vader turned his attention to Ahsoka, it was clear that her sacrifice had made an impact. He cut her sabers down and took her into custody by throwing her aboard his ship. With a triumphant roar, Vader signaled to his troops to regroup. His mission was accomplished. Meanwhile in space, Thrawn's Star Destroyer emerged victorious, having decimated the Rebels' fleet and established Imperial control over the galaxy once again. The remaining Rebels had managed to flee, but they had lost over 80% of their fleet, 
and it felt as though permanent destruction was imminent. Luke thought of Ahsoka and the sacrifice she made for them. It would not go down in vain. He saw Vader take her hostage instead of killing her. She was still alive. He knew she was. He could still feel her presence in the Force. But now Luke would have to journey to the depths of the galaxy in order to locate one last hope to save the galaxy. He set his course for the Dagobah system. Luke's X-Wing pierces the atmosphere of Dagobah as he maneuvers the ship through the bumpy entrance to the planet. He has arrived. The man he wished to locate was none other than the Grand Master of the Jedi Order, Yoda. Luke had never met Yoda. Growing up, Obi-Wan always told him stories of Yoda and tales of the Jedi. He had always hoped to meet him and now he would finally get that chance. Luke finds Yoda's hut and enters, greeting the Jedi Master once and for all. Luke was here to get Yoda's help. He needed him to return to the galaxy with him in order to save everyone from the ruthless Empire. And so, Luke asked the Jedi Master to come back with him to the Rebellion, but Yoda refused. He explained that he was in exile and could not return to the fight. Luke begged and pleaded with Yoda, but he would not change his mind. One of Yoda's many qualities was stubbornness. Just then, the ghost of Obi-Wan Kenobi appeared before them. Luke became emotional very quickly. He thought he had lost his master forever, but here he was, standing before him. Obi-Wan explained to Luke that he must be tested before Yoda would agree to help him. Luke was unsure of what test he would be subjected to. He tried commanding that it would be faster for Yoda to come back now and help save the Republic. This was not an option. Yoda reinforced Obi-Wan's words and explained that Luke must prove himself in order to gain his assistance. Little did Luke know, this was simply Yoda preparing his pupil for the treacherous path and fighting ahead. Luke was hesitant but agreed to take the test. Obi-Wan and Yoda instructed Luke to enter a cave deep in the swamps of Dagobah. He warned Luke that the cave was filled with his deepest and darkest fears and he must face them if he was to succeed. Luke stood at the entrance of the cave on Dagobah, his hand tightly gripping his lightsaber. As he moved deeper into the cave, he felt the weight of his own doubts and insecurities bearing down on him. The darkness seemed to surround him, suffocating him. Suddenly, he heard the sound of Vader's mechanical breathing echoing throughout the cavern. He turned, his lightsaber igniting in response. There, standing before him, was the dark figure of his father. Vader stared at him with cold, lifeless eyes, his presence suffocating. Luke's grip on his lightsaber tightened, ready to fight his father. But before he could make a move, Vader disappeared. Luke continued forward, cautiously making his way through the cave. He could feel the presence of Vader all around him, always just out of reach. As he moved deeper into the cave, his fear and doubt began to take over, making it difficult for him to see or think clearly. Suddenly, Vader appeared again, this time standing directly in front of him. Their eyes met, and Luke's grip on his lightsaber tightened once again. He knew that this was a test, a test that he must pass if he was to become a Jedi. Luke stood there, facing the looming figure of his father. Suddenly, Luke closed his eyes and let the light side of the force surround him. He felt a sense of calm and clarity wash over him, and he knew what he had to do. He turned his lightsaber off and spoke out loud. He said, It's okay that Lord Vader is my father. Just because I'm his son doesn't mean that I am destined to join the dark side. As he spoke these words, Luke felt a powerful surge of energy flow through him, and when he opened his eyes, he knew that he had passed the trial. Vader had disappeared, and Luke was left standing alone in the cave. But he was no longer alone. He knew that he had the strength and courage to face whatever challenges lay ahead, and that he would do with the power of the light side of the force. With a newfound sense of purpose, Luke made his way out of the cave and rejoined Yoda in his hut. Yoda was extremely proud of Luke and explained that he was ready. The two left Dagobah and joined back with the remaining Rebellion fleet. Together, Luke, Yoda, and the Rebels formulated a plan to locate and destroy the Empire's ultimate weapon, 
the Death Star. They had received the Death Star's plans and discovered a weakness in the station's defenses and knew that they could exploit it. They expected that Ahsoka would be held prisoner on the Death Star as this was considered the most powerful weapon in history and impenetrable, thus the perfect prison. Although the story is now taking place around the time of Return of the Jedi, the Death Star they are about to face is still the first Death Star that we see in A New Hope as in this story that never got destroyed. The plan was for Luke and Yoda to sneak on board the Death Star, rescue Ahsoka Tano and then confront Vader and Grand Admiral Thrawn. The rebels would then launch an attack on the station and destroy it from the outside. The operation began, one final mission for the fate of the galaxy. Luke and Yoda managed to board the space station using clone armor and droid disguises. They make their way to the prison section on the station, where they are hoping to find Ahsoka. The two Jedi open every single cell until Yoda could feel a strong presence behind the door he was about to open. He knew she was in there. Using the force, he opened the door and found her lying on the bed. She raced to her feet and was completely confused but thankful to see Master Yoda. It had been decades since they last saw each other. Yoda explained they would reunite later, but for now, they must bring about the end of Skywalker and the Empire. The three raced around the station in order to locate where Thrawn and Vader were. They could sense their presence. Outside the station, the space dogfight raged on, with the rebels doing everything in their power to blow up the Death Star. Even if the Jedi could defeat the Sith, it meant nothing if the tyrannical Death Star was still flying. The Jedi entered the throne room on the Death Star, their lightsabers ignited, ready to face whatever lay ahead. As they stared further into the room, they saw Thrawn sitting on the throne, flanked by Vader on his left and several royal guards armed with electric spears surrounded them. The Jedi plead with Vader to come back to the light, but he only responds with a silent stare. Vader ignited his lightsaber. The red glow illuminated the room. The fight began in earnest. As Yoda engaged Vader in lightsaber duel, it became clear that Vader was more powerful and skilled than Yoda had anticipated. Vader was using all of his strength to overpower the small and agile Jedi master. Yoda was doing his best to keep up with Vader's attacks, but it was becoming increasingly difficult. Vader was using his brute strength and aggressive style to drive Yoda back, putting the old Jedi on the defensive. Despite his best efforts, Yoda couldn't match Vader's power and his moves became more and more defensive as the fight went on. Yoda hadn't held a lightsaber in over 20 years, which made his power significantly weaker to the Sith Lord, who had been slaughtering Jedi for a better part of two decades. Yoda misplaces his lightsaber and Vader cuts his small arm off. Yoda winces in pain as he is thrown into the wall, defeated. Meanwhile, Ahsoka and Luke were still fighting off the royal guards, who were proving to be a formidable force. Thrawn was still seated on the throne, watching the battle unfold with an amused expression on his face. As Luke fought off the attacking royal guards with his lightsaber, Ahsoka leapt into the fray with her two lightsabers ignited. Her agile movements allowed for her to dodge and weave through the electric spears of the guards. She spun, flipped, and twirled around them, striking from every angle with deadly precision. But the guards were relentless, and there seemed to be an endless stream of them. Luke and Ahsoka were outnumbered and outmatched. Ahsoka turned to see Vader strike Yoda's arm and catapult him into the wall. Racing to his aid, she leaves Luke and attacks Vader. This fight did not last long. Instead of focusing Focusing on dueling Vader, Ahsoka attempted to bring her old friend Anakin back. She spoke to him, calling for any part of Anakin to return, but it was too late. She was too late. He wouldn't listen to her. Vader quickly used the force to send her into the wall of the space station, unconscious. Vader turned to see his son, Luke Skywalker, thrown to the ground by the royal guards. He had lost. The sheer number of them proved too great for Luke. The guards stood above him and began electrocuting him as he screamed uncontrollably. Thrawn rose from his throne and added even more pain himself. Vader watched as the royal guards surrounded Luke and began to electrocute him. He saw the agony on his son's face 
and heard the screams of his pain. For a moment, he was transported back to the moment where he himself was electrocuted by the Emperor. The memory of that pain was seared into his mind, and he could not bear to see his son suffer the same fate. Suddenly, something inside Vader snapped. He felt a surge of power course through him, and he knew what he had to do. With a fierce roar, he broke free from the dark side and charged at the royal guards. The guards were caught off guard by Vader's sudden attack, and they faltered. That was all the time that Vader needed. He unleashed his fury on them, striking with deadly precision and unstoppable strength. One by one, the guards fell before him their electric spears no match for the power of the force. Luke watched in amazement as his father fought with ferocity that he had never seen before. Vader looked upwards to see the terrified look on Thrawn's face. In one swift motion, Vader kills Grand Admiral Thrawn and saved the galaxy. Luke could sense the conflict within Vader, the struggle between the light and the dark. But as Thrawn fell to the ground, Vader's face softened. He was Anakin Skywalker once again. Luke, Ahsoka, Yoda, and Anakin leave the Death Star just as the Rebels manage to blow it up. For the first time in decades, the light side won. Celebrations immediately began throughout the galaxy when the news of the Empire's destruction reached them. It was finally over. When Anakin returned with the other Jedi, he was scolded by the rebels and the wider galaxy. They all equally feared and hated him. There was no way he would ever be able to live in peace again. Instead, Luke, Ahsoka, and Anakin leave the rebel settlement and go to a faraway planet in the Outer Rim, where they can begin anew. Calling for any Force-sensitive beings, they slowly start to rebuild the Jedi Order. Although Yoda survived the duel on the Death Star, he would soon after lose his life to old age when he passed away in his sleep. When Obi-Wan Kenobi chose to train Luke from birth, the subsequent events were set in motion, which caused the galaxy to be saved from tyrannical evil and villainy. Now the galaxy was safe from the Sith and ready to enter a new era of peace and prosperity.